mechanical keyboard time. This video, we're gonna talk about uh, the different types of mechanical switches out there on the market because it's very confusing for a lot of people. We're gonna talk about linear switches uh, versus the tactile switches. The and then we're also gonna talk about the clicky switches, but clicky are a version of tactile. So how we're gonna break it down is first, we're gonna talk about the tactile switches, and then we're gonna talk about the linear switches, and we're gonna give you guys an audio sample and just discuss you know, the different actuations, how much force it requires for each different keyboard. I'm gonna give you guys an audio sample uh, of each different type of switch as I'm talking about it, and then again at the end, I'm gonna put all of the different switches right beside each other and test them all in order so you can hear them again. I'm gonna to try to go through this quickly, so stay with me. The tactile switches. Uh, I'm going to mostly cover the ones uh, here from Corsair because we have a bunch of the Corsair keyboards in the house. Thank you very much, Corsair. They did not sponsor this video. I want to let you guys know, but I am going to be giving some of these away soon because we do have uh, several of these for the testing. So let's start off with the uh, Corsair brown switches. The brown switches are a tactile switch, but they are not clicky. Um, they're smooth, and uh, they do have a, a nice, satisfying actuation point. Like, you can feel... Um, the actuation. It requires a little bit of force. It requires 45 grams of force. And if you push them all the way down, all the way at the bottom, that's 55 grams. Now, all of the switches that I'm talking about, all the Cherry MX switches, they, um, they have four millimeters of movement. So you start pressing them down and you have four millimeters until you hit the bottom. At around two millimeters, that's where the actuation happens. Now in the brown, the browns, they actuate right at two millimeters and you'll feel the satisfying click. Um, it requires 45 grams of pressure again. And then uh, after that, in order to reset that switch, you'll have to let up just a little bit. It's the actuation and the reset point are almost at the same part. So if you're double tapping in games with browns, you will feel the, um, you know, the tactile click or you won't, it's not going to make it like a clicking sound. It's very soft. Uh, and I'll play that for you just in a second, but you will, you will feel it actuate. Uh, and then you can just barely let off and, you know, double tap. So it's, it's softer than like a blue, um, and especially softer than a green, and softer than like a, you know, a buckling spring, but that's not exactly a Cherry MX switch. Here's a quick sample of what the browns sound like. So moving up from brown, uh, we have the clear switches, and we don't have any of the clear switches in the house. Uh, as soon as I get my hands on a clear switch, I'll, I'll let you guys know. But the clears are essentially stiffer browns. Um, they require 55 grams of pressure to actuate, and then all the way at the bottom it's 65 grams. But other than that, they're almost identical to browns. For someone who wants browns but, you know, wants a little bit more pressure, then you're going to have to look for clear, and they are somewhat hard to find these days. All right, moving on up from there, let's talk about the clicky tactile switches, like the greens and the blues. Uh, there's also, I believe, whites, but I don't have any whites in the house. Now, first off, the blues. They're very common out there. You'll see them all over the market. We have some blues right here. Yay, clicky, clicky, clicky. Now, the blues are different in the browns in the sense that they also have a click, a very satisfying click. And uh, if you like the click, well, you got to go with the blues or the greens or the buckling springs, maybe Topra. But anyway, the blues, they require 50 grams of force to actuate. So they're only slightly stiffer than the browns, but they do have that satisfying click. Yes, click, click, click. Um, at peak force, we're talking 60 grams. So 50 to actuate and then 60 to mash it all the way down. And it actuates right around in the middle, you know, two millimeters again. But this one you do have to let up a little bit more uh, to double tap because the reset point is back a little bit. So you, you have to press it down all the way, or you have to press it down to the actuation point. And you can't just kind of keep it half mashed. You have to actually um, deliberately press these keys to double tap which is something that I found that a lot of people that like the clicky mechanical switches, um, they, they tend to be more deliberate with their, with their clicks in game. And uh, some people say that they do not like these for games because you have to be a little bit more deliberate, um, but that's gonna be totally up to you. If you're someone who like is okay with letting up a little bit, you know, if, if you don't wanna just play and with reds, you can be kind of mushy with it, but, but these you do have to um, apply a decent bit of force for the double tap and you have to let up so that it can reset and then you can double tap again. All right, here's a quick sample of what the blues sound like. Now let's move on up to uh, greens. Greens require a ridiculous amount of force, 80 grams to actuate and all the way at the bottom, it's 100 grams. So they're almost just like blues. You do have to let up a little bit on them so that they can reset. Uh, you can't just like 
you know, keep it halfway pressed and then just keep mashing. You have to let it up and then repress it. So you have to be very deliberate with these as well, but they are much stiffer. They're more, uh, I guess they're, they're even stiffer than the buckling spring. So they're one of the stiffest switches uh, that I've used. If you're someone who is really deliberate on your keyboard and just loves the idea of just like, you know, going to town and like smacking your keyboard and that sort of thing, be good for you. Uh, they're also good if some, if you're someone who like constantly is, uh, you know, accidentally hitting keys or that sort of thing. You really have to be deliberate on each key on the green switches. People that like the greens and the blues love them. Uh, and the people who really want, you know, actually very stiff Cherry MX keys love the greens. Uh, the greens are not too hard to find these days. They're starting to pop up here and there. Um, and it's up to you if you like the greens or the blues better. But if you want the, you know, the crazy stiffest Cherry MX keys, uh, the greens are the way to go. So here's a sample of the greens. Next up, let's talk about buckling springs, and you'll see these in the Unicomp keyboards um, that are on the market. There's not that many of them and hardly any for gaming. And you'll also find these with all the old IBM uh, Model M keyboards, and those things, I mean, they've been out for years and years. Uh, they're a little bit different than Cherry MX. They have a spring on the inside. When you press it down, the spring actually buckles in the middle, and then that hits, uh, you know, and that presses your key down. Yay, clicky. So let's talk about how these work. Now, these require 65 to 70 grams, um, and the actuation point is at 2.3 millimeters. The, it bottoms out all the way at 3.7, so it's not as deep um, as a Cherry MX switch, and it requires, I guess, uh, you have to press it down farther to actuate it. Um, these also, you need to let them up to reset them a little bit. Just, you can't just like hover them down and, and double tap that way. I mean, you can hover them down a little bit, but you have to be very deliberate with these as well. They do have a different feel when compared to the buckling springs. Um, I mean, they feel extremely clicky because the spring on the, in the inside kind of pops them, pops them back up. Um, but they, they do require less force um, than, the, um, than, the, than the greens. And a lot of people are saying that the greens do feel a lot like the buckling springs. So I think they feel somewhat like the buckling springs, but not quite. Here's a sample of how the buckling springs sound. All right, next up, we're gonna talk about linear switches. Now, linear switches, they do not have a noticeable actuation point. You just press them down and they kind of float. You can really just kind of throw your hands on there and, and, and as you're pressing the button, you can just hold them halfway down and just keep actuating them over and over again. Some people love linear switches for gaming. Uh, they are not as good for typing. And uh, I mean, I, I guess somebody may like them for ty typing, but in general, most people do not prefer these for typing. So let's talk about um, the first type of linear switch, the reds. Now we have the Corsair red keyboard here. Uh, it's the uh, K70 with the red switches. It was the first one that came out uh, from Corsair because, I mean, a lot of people just love them for gaming. They're soft, um, double tapping is easy. You can just like hold your hand halfway down on, on, the, on the keys. They actuate at two millimeters and they bottom out at four millimeters and they require 45 grams of pressure to actuate. And um, like I said, you're not gonna feel them actuate. You just, you know, there's no click, there's no, uh, loud noises or anything like that. There's no noticeable bump. Uh, they're just, I mean, they're kind of mushy actually. Uh, I was using these a while and I found them to be very good for gaming. However, when I was typing, I I'm kind of heavy handed because I'm used to the uh, Model M. Uh, I've used that one for years and um, now I'm using, you know, these blues and greens and that sort of thing. If you're someone who likes uh, to type more deliberately and, uh, or if you're like heavy handed, or even if you're just kind of like, if you kind of like slap your hands all over the keyboard like I do after I've had a couple beers, well, you're gonna have a lot of typos with the red switches. So just keep that in mind. If you're someone who's like, you know, very precise on your keyboard and you never accidentally hit two keys at the same time, like the K and the L or something like that, you'll be just fine uh, with the reds for typing, but they're very good for gaming. Uh, and a lot of people will rave about these for gaming, but I'm not, this video, I'm not gonna really give opinions on which one I prefer. You guys will have to watch a different gear video to see which ones I'm using on my desk. Here's how the uh, reds sound. We don't actually have any black switches um, in the house, the Cherry MX black switches, but they're essentially like a stiffer version of reds. They're linear. Um, you know, they're easy to double tap. The actuation and the reset point are almost at the same spot, so you can easily double tap. Uh, and they require a lot more pressure. They require 60 grams of pressure. That's more than the blues, but they're a linear switch, so you won't actually feel the actuation point, and there will be no click. Um, it takes 80 grams to bottom them out, 80 grams of pressure, and they're just like the browns, and they're actually just like the browns and the blacks and the clears, and just, you know, pretty much all of the Cherry MX switches. They actuate at two millimeters, and they bottom out at four. 
So that's all we have in this video. Uh, the ones we didn't uh, try out, we don't have any Alps keyboards. I'd like to try out some of the Alps switches. And uh, we do not have a Topra keyboard. And I would love to try out a Topra keyboard because it's totally different. So I'm probably gonna get some of those and then make a future video showing off those keyboards. But this will cover about 90% of the keyboards out there on the market. Um, and, I, and I wanted to bring in the, the Model M because it's, it's like where mechanical keyboards started, but they're still around and people are still selling them on eBay. And if you're someone who wants a Model M, uh, you, you know you, you know how, how they are, you can grab one of those. And of course here they've chosen like the three most common, like the three go-to ones, like the blues for the clicky tactile feel back. You have the browns uh, for the tactile feedback, but they're also a, a lot quieter and they don't have, the, they're, not, they're not clicky. And uh, you know, I think they're pretty satisfying. And then you have the, the reds for the, you know, just the linear, smooth, and they're very soft keys, very good for gaming. Uh, again, and that's what Corsair is using for their three keyboards, but you can find greens out there on the market. Um, you can find blacks out there on the market in a lot of different places. So, so just keep your eyes peeled. And uh, now it's time to hear all these keyboards side by side. So here we go. First off, we have the, uh, the reds. Moving on over, here we have the browns. Up next, let's hear the clicky blues. And now the clickier yet green switches. And then last but not least, let's not forget the buckling springs. And that should do it. In the future, um, we will probably have a Topra keyboard. I'm gonna try to get my hands on one of those. I'm very curious about it, uh, just to see how it is. But hopefully this will give you guys an idea. Um, and, and you can probably just think like, hey, my preference is this. I'll probably be really good with that kind of a keyboard. I know you can't exactly put your hands on it in this video, but it's probably the closest thing you're gonna get to being able to put your hands on one of these keyboards so that you can feel it and hear it and all that stuff. But I mean, getting a gaming keyboard or getting a keyboard for, for typing is, a very personal thing. So hopefully we've helped you in this personal matter. If you guys have any questions, hop over to the forum. There's a link right here on the screen. Just click on that. Also, if you guys want to know how to change out all the different switch or not switches, I want to know how to change all the keycaps on these. We have a separate video where Pistol has changed all the keycaps on her Cherry MX keyboard. Uh, so we'll show you how to change them, especially the ones like the, uh, you know, the number pad plus and enter the space bar. They have uh, like a metal hook that has to go in correctly. So just go over and check that out. A lot of things. Hopefully this has helped you. If not, it, it did. I've just decided it did. See you next time.